tonight for Game 5 of the NBA Finals. You know, on Friday night, we conducted an experiment. Uh, I don't know if he... It was a dumb experiment. J.J. Redick, who's a former player, he now works for ESPN, says Steph Curry of the Golden State Warriors reads tweets during halftime that mention... He looks to see what people are writing about him and uses it as motivation in the second half. So Friday night, we were on before Game 4, and I encourage those watching to tweet something saying they saw Steph swallow a fly during the game. Because I thought it'd be funny <laughs> if he sat down at halftime. He's like, whoa, I ate a what? And <laughs> guess a lot of other people thought it would be funny too because a lot of people did do that. Uh, all these tweets <laughs> saying things like, we all saw that or I'm bugging Stephen Curry ate a whole fly. Steph Curry, did you see that fly come out of the back of his shorts and into his mouth? <laughs> Thank God for Twitter. I thought I was the only one who saw Steph Curry eat that fly. He didn't even react. What are the chances that the fly Steph Curry swallowed after it landed on his mouth guard is the same fly that landed on Mike Pence's head? Yeah, what are the chances? There are a lot of them. And I don't know what kind of an effect it had on Steph, but all I know is the Warriors were down by five at halftime. Then Curry came out, dropped 24 points in the second half. Warriors came back to win by 10. So if Golden State ends up winning the series, I should get a ring, right? I mean, it's... Or a fly, or a fly. I mean, that was super fly. We'll be on again in primetime on Wednesday night for game six with Steve Martin, Selena Gomez, and Martin Short. You know, the uh, NBA Finals, isn't the only drama on television right now. In Washington this morning, episode two of CSI Can't Believe Donald Trump's Not in Jail Yet premiered. It, <laughs> I have to say, I watched it, and it is so crazy to see so much evidence confirming that Donald Trump did all the things we saw him do on television <laughs> every day for three months straight on television. You know, his inner circle testified time and time again. They testified that Trump was actively trying to overturn the election. Every reasonable person in his orbit told him he lost. The show got started this morning with an unexpected twist. Bill Stepien, who's uh, Trump's former campaign manager, was supposed to testify against him. He had to pull out at the last minute because his wife went into labor. Basically, he had to pull out because he didn't pull out. And, <laughs> but there were more than enough Trump insiders on hand and on video to shed light on how this happened and what went down at the White House on election night. You remember how Trump came out at 2 a.m. and declared victory, even though Fox News had already said he lost? Well, we finally learned where he got that boneheaded idea. You will also hear testimony that President Trump rejected the advice of his campaign experts on election night and instead followed the course recommended by an apparently inebriated Rudy Giuliani. That's right, and apparently inebriated, which, by the way, is the title of Rudy's autobiography, apparently inebriated. Um, <laughs> Rudy Giuliani told him to go out and just say he won. The way you can tell Rudy's drunk is his breath smells more like booze than cigars and cat turds for a change. And, <laughs> and the, uh, these tales of Rudy's inebri inebriated advice on election night were backed up by uh, senior advisor to the Trump campaign, Jason Miller. Was there anyone in that conversation who, in your observation, had had, had too much to drink? Uh... Mayor Giuliani. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Rudy was drunk. The big question is, what's Donald Trump's excuse? He doesn't even drink. I mean, this testimony from his lawyers, his staffers, his campaign advisors, his own family, there are really only two options here. Either Donald Trump was lying and committed multiple crimes trying to strong arm an election, or he's off his frickin' rocker. And I guess it could be both, but even Jared Kushner, that puppet-headed little snitch, knew better than to go along. <laughs> with Rudy Giuliani's plan. Did you ever share, Mr. Kushner, your view of Mr. Giuliani? Did you ever share your perspective about him with the president? Um, I, I guess... Uh, yes. <laughs> By the way, that wasn't a still photo. That was video. That was, um, you know, everyone... Everyone pretty much told Trump he lost, but didn't want to hear that. He wanted to hear what Rudy Giuliani told him. And how would Trump know Giuliani was drunk? I mean, does this seem like a drunk person to you? Can you imagine a Tony Blinken or Miley? How did, how's that guy a general? All the networks. Wow. All the networks. <laughs> Rudy, 
Georgia. I know Prince Andrew is very uh, questionable now. I never went out with him. Ever. Never, never had a drink with him. Never was with a woman or a young girl with him. No, I'm not a god. I'm a functioning. I'm probably. I mean, they can go smell it, you can tell. Shut up, Shut up. You are a brainwash. <laughs> All right, Rudy, hold that thought. Right? I mean, how would you know? It's just. <laughs> I don't think, I think if we had video of everybody in this audience over their entire lives, we couldn't put something together like that. I mean, <laughs> the uh, committee hired a high profile news producer to try to keep the hearing interesting, but it can be dry sometimes, which is fine for the cable news channels, but young people nowadays, um, this is the audience they really want to reach, D to get them to watch, uh, you need filters. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give <laughs> the whole truth to help you God? The results were still being counted. Uh, it was becoming clear that the race would not be called um, on election night. You were at the decision <laughs> at Fox News on election night, and you called Arizona early for President Biden, which was controversial. Wow, wow, I've not seen Ivanka look so alert before. You know, the star of today's show was Trump's former attorney general, Bill Barr. This is a guy who swept the Mueller report uh, up like a, like a chubby Roomba. He just made it all disappear. Now, suddenly, he cares about the country. Uh, this is what the man who Donald Trump handpicked to run his Justice Department told the president about claims that the election was stolen. I told him that the stuff that his people were shoveling out to the public were bull was bull****. I mean, that the claims of fraud were bull****. And... Uh, you know, he was indignant about that. Same thing happened when they told Trump Eric was born. He was indignant. <laughs> he was... Barr also said Trump had become detached from reality. And that's the thing. This is not some deep state Democrat. This is one of the president's henchiest henchmen. But of course, even though the testimony is coming from inside the House, Trump's calling it a one-sided witch hunt. You know, Fox News didn't even air the first uh, hearing, the primetime edition. They did carry today's proceedings on their network. I guess they figured at 10 a.m. is when most of their viewers are switching out their catheters or applying for <laughs> reverse mortgages or buying walk-in bathtubs. I don't know, but <laughs> Trump released an angry, lengthy written rebuttal tonight in which he doubled down on his bogus claims of election fraud. He suggested Mark Zuckerberg be criminally prosecuted. I'm okay with that. And um, <laughs> but the statement is, it's 12 pages long. There are citations and footnotes, which I don't know what lawyer is still representing him, but no way Trump wrote this. He didn't even read. He thinks footnotes are what got him out of Vietnam, okay? <laughs> and while he's screaming and yelling into the void, the, Re the Republicans in the House are doing everything they can to distract us from these hearings. Andy Biggs from Arizona, he's one of the guys who got a subpoena from the select committee and refused to comply with it. Andy believes we have much bigger chips to fry right now. They don't want you talking about Hey, the size of that pack of tortillas that I just bought last week before it came out. They used to look, they used to look like the regular corn tortillas. Now they look like mini tortillas. Guac him up. Guac him up. It's... <laughs> and don't even get him started on taquitos. Man. What even are those? Meanwhile, in Russia, um, this is interesting, this speculation about Vladimir Putin. Uh, who reportedly travels with a suitcase to Putin. They think he does this because he doesn't want his en uh, enemies uh, to get information about his health status from analyzing his fecal matter, because nothing screams I'm in perfect health like traveling around the world with a suitcase full of your bowel movements. But they say the way it works is a security guy carries the briefcase around, and then when he needs it, he uses That's a good gig, but hey, Sergey. You're on the poop bag today. You're... It's so interesting. I mean, if he goes to another continent with it, would that techly, technically make it an ICBM? <laughs> Thank you. That's... Uh, anyway. <laughs> a briefcase to poop in. Actually, not a bad idea for Spirit Airlines. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
You know, last night in New York, uh, they had the Tony Awards. This, this is that magical time of the year when comic book nerds turn on the TV and go, why is Wolverine wearing sequins? <laughs> Hugh Jackman did a number from his big hit show, The Music Man. Did you watch the Tony Awards last night, Gil? No, I didn't. You did not it. surprising to me, but... <laughs> Best musical went to A Strange Loop, which is uh, about a Broadway usher named Usher who's writing a musical about a Broadway usher named Usher. And if that isn't confusing enough, it's written by a guy named Michael Jackson and beat out the musical about Michael Jackson. Don't smoke weed before you see it. You might never get home, <laughs> is what I'm saying. The actor who plays Michael Jackson... Uh, one best actor uh, for his performance as the King of Pop, 22-year-old Miles Frost became the youngest person to win best actor in a musical. He gave a very emotional speech. 13 years after his death, Michael Jackson somehow still manages to touch young men. It is really incredible. <laughs> Too soon? Too soon. Okay, all right, well, we'll give it another 13. On the other end of the music spectrum, Luke Combs, who is a, a country music superstar, has a, <laughs> like, I, I think I'm drinking some of Ru Rudy's stuff. <laughs> superstar was the word I was mumbling, but he has a new album called Growing Up coming out, uh, June 24th, and Luke is a great lover of the outdoors and somehow managed to turn one of his hobbies into a very lucrative uh, endorsement deal, a new commercial that we are pleased to present for the first time ever right now. Hey y'all, I'm Luke Combs, and I love to fish, but I'm no pro. That's why I start every adventure with a trip to Bass Amateur Shop. <laughs> the place for people who love to fish, but don't have the faintest idea how to do it. Our friendly employees are ready to help find the gear that's right for you and answer all of your stupidest questions. How wet is the fish going to be? Are fish animals or dolphins? How do they get all that salt in the water? Why is one fish fish and two fish is also fish? I have no idea, but this is cool. We've got everything you need, from the little cranky turny guys, the big tall shoes, dental floss, the scoop de doo and a big ass selection of Christmas ornaments. When I used to go fishing, I'd always come home empty handed, but thanks to the Bass Amateur Shop, I finally caught my first fish. Awesome! Put it in this big lunchbox. Get it in there, you're not gonna hurt it. We'll get it. I don't know what that is. So come on down to Bass Amateur Shop, because you don't have to be a professional to get drunk on a lake. Located at exit 78, just off I-90. Call us if you get lost. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings. <laughs>